What is up guys, this is Kobe here, and uh, welcome to the complete showcase of Explorers Remastered. I'm going to be going over all 14 of the Explorer classes that have received changes. There is 15 because Pathfinder exists, but in this update, Pathfinder did not receive any sort of remaster since the class is still relatively new. Well, it's three years old, but it's still kind of new in their eyes. I do want to let y'all know though, this video will only really cover just new skill animations and most of the things like that. I'm not going to be go over, going over in detail too much about every single job's mechanics because I don't know all 14 jobs like that. Uh, so for the, for the ones that I do know what I'm talking about, I will bring that up and I will talk about how I feel about certain changes and stuff like that. But that's going to be about it. Just know that this video will mostly just go over skill changes. And for a proper showcase of each job advancements, I have went and reset the skills of every single character just so I can showcase them properly in this video. So coming up first, we have Hero. Now the changes that Hero received at first job are very minimal. Honestly, there's not really too much to go over. So I'll make this really quick. Uh, the Slash Blast, the first job skill, is just a little bigger if you can compare it to uh, before the patch it's like slightly bigger and then plus they also have flash jumps also when i was streaming the showcase a lot of people were wondering if certain classes had hot key will flash jumps or not so i will let you guys know that for every job i play hero does not have a hot key will flash jump they have also brought upper charge the first job and each warrior has a different animation for their upper charge there were also some slight changes to the leap attack skill, and uh, that's pretty much about it. Moving on to second job, we have Brandish, the main attacking skill. As you can see, the hitbox for Brandish is slightly bigger, and that's all there is to that. Uh, there's also a new skill in second job, where you are able to use it to rush towards the closest mob that is within your range. You cannot use this skill if there is not a mob in range. You can also hold the skill to go up if you want to go up or go down if you want to go down and left and right. Again, you cannot use this skill if there are no mobs in range. I will demonstrate whatever Drake spawned here, the maximum range. There I go. Just like that, that is the maximum range for that skill. And just as you saw, there is no cooldown on the skill. You can use it as freely as you like as long as you are attacking a mob that is within range. You've got the new combo orbs, which not a lot of people are a fan of how they look, uh, but I believe the uh, the ability to toggle the combo orbs on and off on your character still exists. Just as long as you right click the skill button. So it appears that it is locked right there, and I will try to turn them on, and uh, no, they, they still appear in your character, never mind. And then the skill Rage has been changed to Spirit Blade. And it still pretty much gives the same effect as Rage with the whole 30 attack and the damage decreased and the whole attack reflection thing. It's still part of the skill. Other changes to the second job would include Booster being a passive and it now gives 10 strength. And that's about it. Now moving on, we've got third job. So Brave Slash, a lot bigger than it was before. It's actually able to double plat in maps like these, so Hero should not have any problem with their mobbing before fourth job, especially with skills like this skill right here. They also received a new skill, Shout was removed and they replaced it with Aura Blade, which has a 7 second cooldown and you shoot out this massive Aura Blade at enemies that goes pretty far. So whenever it's back up, I will demonstrate it again. We have it. And depending on how you time it and depending on the size of the mobs, you can also get off a good double plat with using this skill as well. The animation of Rush has been changed. Nothing really special. And then they removed Panic and added a new skill called Scarring Sword, which is a 80 second buff which works exactly like Panic, but you can activate the debuff with any skill instead of just Panic alone. The debuff applies a 20% accuracy decrease and a 30% attack decrease on the mob. And those are pretty much all the changes for Hero at third job. Everything else is passive and that's about it. Alright, moving on to fourth job. Two new skills that I will showcase at the same time, Raging Blow and Advanced Combo. 
Well, advanced combo isn't necessarily new, it just looks slightly different. But this is Raging Blow's base animation now. It's a lot bigger than it was before. A lot easier to double plat on mobs. It also has a much better horizontal range as well. And then whenever your combo orbs are completed, they're full, everything, you unlock the permanent enhanced version of Raging Blow even for bobbing. And this is what it looks like. It has a much better horizontal range. I think the vertical range might be the same on it though. And uh, that's about it. The look of puncture has been changed. Here's what it looks like now. It, I'm not really sure. Okay, so it has a much, much, uh, actually, I think the or the vertical range for it is about the same. I feel like this attack's hitbox didn't really change too much, but it still applies the same exact debuff that Puncture did. It also increases the damage of Aura Blade, makes that stronger. And I also forgot to mention that none of hero skills anymore consume combo orbs that was that was supposed to be something i was supposed to bring up at second job but i completely forgot they left magic crash in the game and it still does the exact same thing so that's nothing new here's the new enrage it at level 30 it provides 25 percent final damage and 20 percent critical damage and the amount of mobs you can hit with your skills is decreased to one third of what it was before and everything else from fourth job are just passives and buffs that we're all familiar with. So moving on to hyper skills, the hyper skills we have are advanced combo, final attack, and raging blow, which I believe is the same as before. So going into the actives, they have a pretty important one here, Valhalla. What Valhalla does now is pretty much it's the same, same exact thing, 30 second buff, 150 second cooldown, but when you are attacking every time you attack with Raging Blow, um, or just any skill in general, you will hit 500% damage four times in two activations, so it's basically eight lines of 500% damage on six mobs. So allow me to demonstrate. I will start a battle analysis here, use Valhalla, and then spam Raging Blow. The extra attacks that you see, they are not critting. Somebody suggested that Valhalla currently in this test server version follows a summon damage formula, which would make sense of why it doesn't crit, but I can't be 100% certain on that. But there are eight lines of damage for every time you attack with Valhalla. Obviously in an actual boss fight with fit drop skills, the uh, damage dealt from Valhalla will be a lot lower than 39.78%, but in that demonstration I've shown, Valhalla did a total of 672 lines of damage. The reason why they added, uh, they added that new effect to Valhalla is because at 5th job, your 5th job skill World Reaver will no longer consume combo orbs, even though the skill says it consumes combo orbs, so they haven't even updated the skill yet. And it will also no longer give the final damage buff you receive from losing the combo as well. It doesn't take away any combos. So one more quick demonstration at Barog with the stat window open. I will go ahead and plant this down on the battle analysis. You can see I have 185% final damage right now, though barely because of the transparent window. Now we use the combo of Sword Illusion and Ward Weaver and... Uh, nothing changes and there we have it that's it for hero if you have any questions about hero let me know down below all right next job we've got paladin so paladin first job pretty much the exact same as hero you got slash blast which is no different the only thing that's different is the upper charge, which has a hammer to it now instead of a sword. Also, just a disclaimer, uh, I forgot to mention this with Hero as well, but all Hero animations are sword now and all Paladin animations are hammer. It doesn't matter which weapon you wear. This may change before it goes live, but right now, that is just how it is. And then we also have the leap attack. And uh, just like I said with Hero, flash jump not hotkeyable for paladins for a second job our first skill we have is divine swing 
this is the main attacking skill for a second job and this is the best time for me to say they have got rid of the entire elemental aspect of paladin and paladin now only has divine skills now their elemental charging thing how that worked before it has been completely scrapped and redid with the new system called holy force which funny i say that because it's the exact same thing as stacking elemental stacks though you only have to use divine skills and blasts in order to stack holy force and the effects are pretty much the exact same as if you were to stack the elemental skills from before and then we have page order which is the skill from before it just looks a lot more light now a lot more divine and uh, that's basically it and then we just got the passives we have booster that is passive now just like hero there's also stance at second job and then all the other skills at second job are pretty much the same all right third job first skill we have is divine charge which is exactly like the divine charge that existed at oh that's the wrong skill oh it's exactly like the divine charge that was at fourth job Though it does feel like it is a little smaller than before. It's probably not, but it's... Yeah, compared to Heroes Brave Slash, it has um, a little bit of a smaller hitbox, but I think it's something that Paladins can still definitely manage at their job. The self-heal skill still exists, where you heal 50% HP, but the more times you use it within like the next 15 seconds, the amount of HP you heal will gradually decrease and it will decrease all the way down to 10%. There's also Rush, which is just a big hammer now. It also feels like Rush for Paladin also got their delay in between each Rush a little bit shorter, but maybe that's just me. And then we have Noble Demand. Noble Demand is exactly like Threaten. And the best thing about it is all of the Threaten Hyper skills were removed and uh, all effects that the Threaten Hyper Skills gave were added into Noble Demand. So it is exactly like Threaten, but with all, all three Hyper Skills applied. Next up, we've got Parashot Guard, which is exactly like the toggle from before, where it increases your attack and it reduces the damage taken from party members. And uh, that's mainly it. And Combat Orders also still exist, and it increases all skill levels at fourth job by two. All of the other skills are pretty much the same. There's just a different animation for Blessing Armor now, but I believe it still functions the way it did before. Now at fourth job, the first skill I have to show is Divine Stigma. And what this does is it enhances Divine Charge to where it will cause a huge explosion with a really massive range. Also the base range of Divine Charge will be increased as well when you level up Divine Stigma. We also have Blast, which Blast looks like this now with this big guardian that comes from behind you and attacks monsters with this really huge hammer. The only downside about Blast is it only hits one mob still, while most of the 1v1 skills that got changed in this update were buffed to be able to hit three mobs instead of just one. This skill here is Divine Judgment, where when you use Blast, you will have up to 5 stacks on a mob, and once you reach 5 stacks, it will explode, dealing 500% damage 10 times, and it will ignore enemy defense. I can't really show that here, because these are regular monsters, so I'll show that at Barog. So moving forward, we have Heaven's Hammer, Sanctuary, which pretty much does the exact same thing as it did before, just with a completely different animation. And just in case you did skip the hero portion, Magic Crash has returned. Does the exact same thing it did before. There are absolutely no changes with this skill besides its animation. Because the whole elemental system of Paladin has been removed, we have a skill now called Defined Blessing, and this will be in place of Elemental Force that was at for the job. And what it does is it increases your final damage by 21% at level 32. Everything else is pretty much the same. We have Advanced Holy Force, which is the exact same thing as Advanced Elemental Charge. And the Resurrection skill has been changed to look a little different, but everything is still applied, where if you do resurrect a member using the skill, there is a 560 second cooldown, and you and the party member that you resurrected will receive a 10 second iframe. So with Hyper Skills, like I said before, Threaten has been removed and it has been replaced with Divine Charge, which is 20% damage, 20% crit rate, and uh, plus one attack lines. 
For the active skills, we have Sacro Sanctity, which does the exact same thing you did before. The only thing that is different is the skill animation. And remember, you can cut the cooldown of the skill if you do in the skill early. There's also Smite, which again, does the exact same thing as it did before. But the animation is very, very different. And the hitbox is a lot wider. And then as per usual, we have Epic Adventure, which is the same as before. Just with the different animations to it. Now for 5th job changes, Holy Unity aka Divine Echo has had its cooldown increased from 120 to 180 seconds, but the overall buff it provides has been adjusted. At level 30, this skill lasts for 90 seconds and it will give Paladin a 75% final damage increase. And then party members that are mimicking its attacks will also have the mimicked attacks increased by... Well, it'll do 38% final damage of Paladin's original attacks. Blessed Hammer works the same way it did before, but now it is based on how much Holy Force that Paladin has. And like I said earlier, it is a lot easier for Paladins to stack Holy Force than it was before. And then we have Grand Guardian. This skill's cooldown was increased from 150 to 180, 180 seconds. So it's a 180 second cooldown and it has received an overall 20% final damage increase because of its cooldown increase. And as I've said before, I will showcase Divine Judgment at Barog. So we hit five stacks, and then bam, 10 lines of 500% damage. So doing a quick little battle analysis demonstration at Barog. We'll turn all of that on, we'll use all of the skills, and uh, Pretty much the damage, or well, the lines on Grand Guardian should be the same, if I'm not mistaken. I will show them at the end of this, just so you can tell if they, they are the same or if they are any different at all. You will go ahead and turn that off, and the lines show to be 660. And those are all of the changes that I have to show for Paladin. The next character for the showcase today is none other than Dark Knight. And the last time I have to say this, the first job is exactly the same. You just got Raging Blow. Not Raging Blow, I'm sorry. We've got Slash Blast. Same as Hero and Paladin's first job. A bit of a bigger range. And then we got Upper Charge, which is purple this time, and you can barely, sort of barely, see the spear with it. You actually have to pay attention to it in order to actually see the spear. That is within the skill. And then we just have Deep Attack, which is also the same. And as I've said with Hero and Paladin, Dark Knight cannot bind their flash jump. And now for second job, the first skill I have to showcase is Spear Pulling, which is like the skill from before. This is also your only main second job attacking skill without a cooldown. I find it much better than the uh, the stab, the Peter stab that we had before. So this is pretty nice. Next up, we've got Beholder. You spawn him and you notice he's gained some weight. Still does the exact same thing he did before. Then we also have Beholder Shock, which goes through three different stages, which, you know, the first stage is second job, second stage at third and the third stage at fourth. Here is what Beholder Shock 1 looks like right here. I would say pretty decent range for a second job skill. Definitely not too bad at all. Then we have Hyper Body. It is the same as before, but the skill icon is a little bit darker and the skill animation is a lot darker. It looks more, uh, more menacing. And then as far as passives are concerned, two skills became passive at second job, Iron Will, and booster then for the rest of the second job skills everything is exactly the same all right moving on over to third job we've got lomonka spear but it's no longer a key down spinning skill and it's just a skill where you do a small spinning animation and then you do this jab attack that you swing the spear and it does four lines of damage so not that big of a fan of the skills hitbox it is a bit better than what we did have at third job though but it's still kind of all right i do think the skill does lose to both hero and paladin's third job skills and then we've got rush 
Same feeling as Paladin. I feel like the delay on Rush is a bit lower between attacks now. But now we have this spear that comes out of it. This purple big spear. And then Cross Surge does the exact same thing. The buffing for it is just a little different. And the last attacking skill, we've got Beholder Shock 2. Which the skill here looks like this. It did not hit the bottom platform, but that's okay. There's like a little bit of more of like an electric sphere to it now compared to what was shown at second job. And then all the other passes at third job are not any different. All right, fourth job. The two skills I most certainly have to show are Gungnir's Descent, which hits three mobs now and there is no cooldown within the skill. It's also really hard to notice when you see it at first glance, it just looks like toothpicks coming down from the sky. But if you pay attention very carefully, there are spears that are attacking the mobs. They are pretty hard to notice, but they do exist and it's not just small toothpicks. And then we got Dark Impale, which has a much better horizontal, horizontal, I'm sorry, horizontal range, but the vertical range for it is still pretty much the same. We've got Reincarnation. We'll talk about that later. You got Dark Resonance, which is pretty much sacrifice. They removed sacrifice and they added Dark Resonance instead. And it still gives the exact same buff, has the exact same cooldown, has the exact same duration, literally the exact same thing as sacrifice from before. But they changed how Dark Resonance works. Before, or sacrifice technically. Before, you would decrease the cooldown with Beholder attacks, but now the cooldown is decreased from when you attack on your own. And for those who skip the hero in the Paladin portion, Magic Crash still exists, does the exact same thing, animation is still the same, why? And then everything else is pretty much the same except for Beholder Revenge, which is like that one skill that we had at 4th job, but we got Beholder Shock 3 that comes with it now. And this is what Beholder Shock 3 looks like. Massive hitbox. Also, I don't know if it's because of my ping or it's a bug with the test server, but if you spam the key of Beholder Shock, you can use the skill more than once. Like, I think I just used it three times right there. But I doubt I'm going to be able to use it live like that, so I don't even know why I showed it. So we've got Reincarnation. There are three different modes of Reincarnation. Reincarnation Quarter, Reincarnation Half, and reincarnation full reincarnation quarter has a two second duration in which you have 10 seconds to meet the condition of hitting 60 times or killing 60 mobs or hitting a boss monster 60 times in order to reduce the cooldown by 70 seconds and it has a base cooldown of 180 seconds and then we've got reincarnation half which on here it says 20 seconds but if you actually use reincarnation half you can look down here and it says that it only lasts for six seconds and it does only last for six seconds because i tested it before you have 20 seconds to meet the hit conditions of killing 110 mobs or hitting a boss monster 110 times to reduce the cooldown by 80 seconds with a base cooldown of 260 seconds and then we've got reincarnation full which is the exact same thing as the current reincarnation that's in the game right now but you've got to hit 130 times instead of whatever low number it was before this skill is still affected by buff duration so you will still need buff duration as a dark knight and now i will do a quick demonstration of reincarnation half so we will go into this boss fight and the first thing i will do in the boss fight is die upon dying give it a second Upon dying, the buff shows right here, and your requirements to meet the hit requirements will show right above your character. If you die, I believe it just immediately goes away. I will test that right now. I'm dead. It's gone. And the cooldown does not get decreased on the skill at all. So in this current test version, I'm not really a fan of Reincarnation Quarter or Reincarnation Half. I would still prefer to use Reincarnation Full, but that's just my personal opinion. Hyper skills. All the passive ones are exactly the same. Beholder, Reincarnation, and Gungnir. And for the actives, we have Dark Thirst. That's the same thing as it did before. With the different skill animation. And we have Dark Synthesis, aka Nightshade Explosion. Which is purple, and you can also use it while jump attacking. 
the madman finally did it after however many years the skill has been out. And as per usual, we have Epic Adventurer. Same thing as before. Alright, now for fifth job changes. We've got Darkness Aura. You no longer need to have Hyper Body and Iron Will active in order for all of its skill effects to take place. It will now do everything that you need for it to do without needing Hyper Body or Iron Will actively up. Well, Iron Will is passive anyway, so there really isn't much of a point in using Hyper Body because of this change. And then we have Pure Cyclone. The duration of the skill has been cut in half, but the cooldown is still the same of 180 seconds. The reason why this is, is because they compress the damage dealt with Pure Cyclone to where you get its full damage out in four and a half seconds versus before where it took nine seconds to get the whole thing out. Here's the demonstration. Turn the battle analysis on and we use Cyclone. As you can see, there are twice as many lines now compared to before, but again, the skill is only half as long. And to confirm it, I did a test even on the live server, and it also did do 375 lines. And that is all we have for Dark Knight. We are now finally moving on to mages, and the first mage I have is Ice Lightning. So, Ice Lightning changes. We still have Teleport, that's the same. But we have Energy Bolt, which on the skill description does say it does 309% damage. But when you use it, it does like four lines of damage. So I don't know if that's 309% for four lines or it's four lines added up to a total of 309%. We have the Magic Guard Toggle, which is exactly the same, just with a slightly different animation. And then we have a new skill called Mono Wave. And Mono Wave is an up jump. You can up jump exactly like other classes that jump, hold the up arrow key, and then jump again. And uh, another cool addition with Mono Wave is that if you hold the jump key while you are in air after you use it, you will be in the air and you will descend slowly for a short period of time. Everything else is exact exactly the same with the defensive skill and MP increase, and that's it for first job. Moving on to second job, we've got Cold Beam, which the vertical on Cold Beam is really big. Looks really, really cool to be honest as well, just with the icicles coming up. Uh, next up, we've got Thunderbolt, which pretty much looks the same as before. There's like a slightly different animation to it. But if you were to ask me from before the change, I wouldn't really notice too big of a difference with Thunderbolt. Cold Beam is definitely the one that got the bigger change in the two. Then there's Chilling Step. Whenever you teleport, there is a chance you will leave a trail of really cold ice that does very small damage to mobs. Honestly, this ice looks a lot better than what's in the game right now because it looks like you can really see that like, the ice is like really, really cold. Yeah, a 60% chance to cast it every time you teleport. The ice only does 2% damage and it lasts for 6 seconds. We also have Meditation, 30 magic attack for 4 minutes split the different animation booster is also a passive and it gives 20 int and then everything is the same as before all right now for third job first skill i have to show is ice strike skill looks like it pretty much has the same hitbox as before but it also looks like it's like a mouth of ice that's coming to just eat up the monsters somewhat maybe maybe not but that's what it looks like to me personally uh there's also a the Status resist toggle and the passive. So this one hasn't really changed at all. It just has a different animation. We have Glacier Wall. Which Glacier Wall does is you have this wall of ice that hits the enemies and it pushes them back. It's more of like a knockback skill for mobs of sort. And then we have Thunder Spear, which is a cloud of thunder that follows you and attacks enemies on the way. You can also cast it stationary by holding the down key and pressing the skill again, but the stationary cast has a 30 second cooldown. When Thunder Spear is stationary, it does triple the amount of damage as it does compared to when it's following you. And it will also be fixed to that location for 50 seconds. And then we have Teleport Mastery, which is the same as before. And then we also have Teleport Boost, which is pretty much a part of Teleport Mastery, just a different skill but that you need to have Teleport Mastery to be able to learn. 
which increases the vertical and the horizontal range of your teleport. Other than that, we just have the same old passives. The elemental resist, I'm not sure if this was an active skill before, but if it was, it is a passive skill now. Now we got fourth job. First skill, chain lightning. Pretty much the exact same as before, just with a slightly different skill animation. There's also been a lot of talks about this skill and whether its range got nerfed or buffed compared to before. But it turns out the range is at the very least exactly the same as before. Maybe even slightly buffed, but pretty difficult to notice. Just know that it was not nerfed. For our next skill, we have Freezing Breath, which is the bind, which Binds enemies for 13 seconds when you use it, but as long as you are holding down the skill, you are completely invincible. For our next skill, we have Blizzard. That was the animation for Blizzard. You know that the passive final attack for it, the skill no longer has to be on cooldown in order for it to be used up. And then we got Frozen Orb. Does the exact same thing as before just with a different skill animation. And then we've got Elkinese. Forgive me if I mispronounce the skill name, but the skill animate or the summon it looks completely different now. It's a lot more spiky, shows a lot more ice features on it, and it still does the same exact thing as it did before. And then everything else is the same. There is a bit of a different skill cast animation for Infinity, but that is about it. Hyper skills include Teleport Mastery, Chain Lightning, and Frozen Orb. Well, that I, I believe Ice Lightning is the only Explorer Mage with a uh, hyper skill that increases the distance of Teleport, which is a toggle, by the way. But um, I will see if I'm wrong once I do the other two jobs. But for the actives, we have the 140 skill, Ice Aura. Ice Aura is the same as before. I have it active right here. You can see there's um, just a little breeze of ice next to your character, but there's also a new part of the skill called the Vortex. It has a 15 second duration and a one minute cooldown for the Vortex. And what the Vortex does, it increases the ice stacks on monsters a lot faster. Next up, we've got Lightning Spear. It lasts for 3.6 seconds. I'm gonna go in before this dude does. Uh, but it lasts for 3.6 seconds and it has a cooldown of one minute. So just to demonstrate the amount of lines the skill does, we'll go ahead and hot uh, key it. And then we'll use it. Lightning Spear does a total of 225 lines every minute. And then we have the blue version of Epic Adventure, which does the same thing as before. Anyway, moving on to fifth job, there are no real fifth job changes to any of this class of skills, like any of the ice lighting ones, but there are some massive changes to Unreliable Memory. Unreliable Memory now comes with a new skill called Memory Choice, in which with this skill, you can pick which skill you want to use for unreliable memory. And the skill that you obviously want to use with an active is infinity. But the skill also does show all of the skills that you can use. There are five different skills that you can use for each ice lightning, fire poison, and bishop. And, uh, you know, for ice lightning, we got chain lightning, the bind, blizzard, the lightning orb, and there was some more that I did not have time to see. It's Frozen Orb. The last skill I didn't see was Frozen Orb. When you use a skill from Unreliable Memory, the cooldown on it is very random and it's landed on a percentage chance to use it. It's uh, some pretty wild rates, honestly. I'd recommend looking at the blog post down below in the comments to check it out. But I believe it goes all the way up to a six minute cooldown if you are unlucky. So for example, I would use Infinity and I have a bit over four minutes on the skills cooldown. I believe if you are extremely lucky and you pull the skill, the cooldown for it will only be like a bit over a But that is very, very rare for that to happen. And that is all I have to show for Ice Lightning because like I said earlier, none of the other fifth job skills were changed. 
Next mage, we got Fire Poison. And because I don't expect people to watch this entire video, there might be some repeated points in both Fire Poison and Bishop that I have already made for Ice Lightning. So first job, again, exactly the same as all the other job advances for Magician. We've got the Magic Guard, which just has a bit of a different animation to it, but it is still a toggle. Energy Bolt, it does four lines of damage, but it just says it hits four mobs with 309% damage. So whether this is 309% damage four times or four lines added up to a total of 309% damage, I'm completely unsure. We have Teleport, which is the same as before. And then we have Mono Wave, which is an up jump for mages, which works like other classes up jumps where you press the jump key again while holding up in the air. It's not like the Archer one where you had to double tap the up jump. And also, if you press the up jump key again, or you press the up jump button that's hot keyed, or you just hold the jump button after you've up jumped, you'll be able to float in the air and fall down a little slower for a certain period of time. Then the passives that we have for the class are still pretty much the same. So moving on to second job, we've got Flame Orb, which is a lot bigger now than it was before. Like I'm talking a lot bigger. It just went from that one ball to a bunch of balls being shot at enemies. It does the same amount of damage though, 301% two times. And that's it for the fire skill. And then for the poison skill, we have Poison Breath, which looks a lot like the fifth job poison skill in terms of the icon of the skill, but it hits enemies with this big wave of poison that does 180% damage six times on up to six enemies so it's a lot stronger than the fire the fire orb and then we've got ignite the toggle which is the same as before and ignite is applied by attacking enemies when you attack enemies there is a 50 percent chance you will apply ignite and it will be on the floor for six seconds doing 40 percent damage for three lines here's the demonstration right here Booster is passive, gives 20 int. We also have Meditation with a different scale animation, but it does the same thing. Gives 30 magic attack for 240 seconds. And then all the other passives are basically the same. Decided to choose a bit of a different map than usual for this class's third job, which you guys will see why in a second. But for the first skill, we have Explosion, which is the same damage as before. The skill just looks a bit different. And that's about it. And then we have Poison Mist, which still does the same thing as before. Leaves a cloud of poison on mobs. The Poison DLT still does not bring enemies down below one health though, sadly. So you still have to finish them off yourself. And then we got the biggest game changer skill, Poison Region. This replaces Viral Slime and is one of the best skills I've ever seen on this class or just of anything in general. So Poison Region will have this little line of poison on the platform or on the ground that it is on and when you use skills near it the poison on the floor will explode and it has a really big hit box that can hit even the platforms above another demonstration it will follow all the way over here and i'm gonna say it now before i forget but poison region for boost notes will be under the exact same skill as teleport mastery and will give three percent final damage per level the skill also currently provides a massive damage increase with inside actual boss fights. Some have even tested that it does 30% of the class's entire damage in serious boss battles. So this skill may get a little bit of a nerf in future updates, but we will have to just wait and see. Now for toggles, the same thing as Ice Lightning. We have the elemental skill, except you don't have an ice shield around you this time. You just have a passive of status resist and an active of avoiding a certain status effects that monsters would try to put on top of you. And then we have teleport mastery, which you can damage monsters with teleport, and then teleport boost, which increases the distance of the teleport on the class. And the teleport also becomes red. All of the other passives are the same, and I believe this was an active skill before elemental resist. Um, the elemental resist part was, but I'm pretty sure the final damage was a passive, but now the entire skill is just passive. Fourth job. Now, for fourth job, we have Paralyze, which Paralyze, 
I think has a much better vertical range, which can't really be shown in this map correctly, but it goes all the way up to where the flames on the scale go up to. So it is pretty high. Next up, he's got Flame Haze. I'll cover this first and then I'll cover Mist Eruption. So Flame Haze looks like that. We'll make the Mist Cloud with it. And then you can use Mist Eruption to be able to blow up the cloud. Animations are different, but both skill effects are still the same. And then we've got Meteor. Just like with Blizzard, the final attack effect of it no longer requires the skill to be on cooldown. Infinity has received a bit of a different scale animation, and then we also have Ifrit, which looks much different than it was before. It looks more fiery and more rocky than previously. And then all of the other passives within the skill are the same. The hyper skills applied for Fire Poison are Poison Mist, Paralyze, and Mist Eruption. And then for the actives, we have the Flame Aura, which is does the same thing as before but with a much different animation to it and then we also have megiddo flame i believe that's what the name of the skill is but with this skill uh they wanted to make it have better mobbing so with it you throw out a lot more orbs and uh, they will bounce around and hit more mobs so the mobbing on this skill has most certainly improved and then epic adventurer same as before so with a different animation. For fifth job, Fire Poison Mages really only received one change with their fifth job skill other than Unstable Memory. But with Poison Chain, they improved the mobbing on the skill pretty much a little bit where the poison has a much wider range to it and applies to a lot more mobs while they are while there are mobs around. And while I am here, let me do get let me give a quick demonstration on how insane this class's mobbing has become in maps such as these. Once I start hitting the poison on the ground, tied to poison region, the explosions are just absolutely nasty. They, they go all the way across the map. As you can see, poison region is going all the way over here, despite the origin of the skill being right here. And it's an absolute mess. It's ridiculous. And once again, I will cover Unreliable Memory. Unreliable Memory is now a skill which you have a skill called Memory Choice, in which you can use Memory Choice to pick one of six different skills to activate when using Unreliable Memory, and it will activate 100% of the time, with Infinity being one of these skills. The other skills include Poison Region, Poison Eruption, um, Meteor, I believe there was also Flame Haze on there, as well as Paralyze. But obviously, just like with any mage, you would want to choose Infinity. And then the cooldown has a limit of six minutes whenever you use it, but there is a really long, like, chance, percentage chance of having a shorter cooldown on the skill, which you can see the full description of that in the blog post down below in the description. So for example, I will use Infinity through Unreliable Memory on this character, and the cooldown of the skill is a bit over three minutes. That is all I have to showcase for Fire Poison. For our next class and our final mage, we have Bishop. So first job, the exact same as Ice Lightning and Fire Poison. We got a different animation to Magic Guard, which is a toggle. We have Energy Bolt, which hits 309% damage on four enemies, but as I've said before, the skill does four lines, so I don't know if it's 309% damage total, or four lines of 309% damage each. And then, Teleport, that's basically the same. And then we have a new skill called Mono Wave, which is an up jump skill. You can activate this up jump by pressing the skill while you're in air, or do the usual up jump command that is jump, up arrow key, and then jump. And then while you also use this skill, if you are in the air after you use it, you can float downwards a little bit. And that's it. And other than that, the two passive skills are still pretty much the same. That's it for first job. Now for second job, we have Holy Arrow. It looks a lot better than before, that's for sure. It's three lines, 185% damage each line, and it 
It's up to four mobs. And then we have heal, which they removed, they completely removed the final damage debuff that heal gives on bosses. You just heal yourself as well as healing party members. And then for the last second job skill I can actively show, we have bless. It so does the same thing. There is just a different skill animation that is applied to it. Booster has become a passive and it now gives 20 ints and then everything else still passive works exactly the same as before. All right, now for the third job showcase. We have Shining Ray, just with a different skill animation, but overall the skill does the same thing as before. We've got Holy Fountain, which is the same thing as what Fountain has always done. With again, just a different skill animation. Skill animation, press up on the fountain to be able to regain all of your health. We have Divine Protection, another status effect. Toggle, which is somewhat similar to what Ice Lighting and Fire Poison has. And then we also have Mystic Door, which looks slightly different, but again, still the same effect. Send you to the nearest town, and then you can also choose to go back as long as the door is still up. But we also have Dispel, which removes the status effect on both you and your party members with an 8 second cooldown. If you remove a party member status effects, the cooldown will be reduced, and the cooldown of Divine Protection will also be reduced as well. So we've got Holy Symbol, exact same effect, just with a different skill animation. And then Teleport Mastery, Teleport does damage, Teleport Boost, Teleport has more range, and Bishop's Teleport becomes yellow. And then we also have Holy Shield, which, same thing as before, just gives you the whole shield, which reduces the attack some damage, or reduces the damage from attacks that every monster does, including boss attacks, it just looks different than it does before. And then we have the two passives, which are both the same. Now, moving on to fourth job, we have Angel Ray. Angel Ray is now a skill that only hits one mob no matter what. It no longer matters whether you have digits of Angel active or not. And this is what it looks like. Bit of a change. And I believe it does 14 lines. Next up, we have Genesis, which there is no sort of like final attack or anything like the other mages have. Genesis is just a full screen attack, which has a 45 second cooldown. And then we've got Big Bang. It is what Big Bang looks like now. Still the same damage as before, but it no longer applies the IED effect that it had before on mobs, and neither does Angel Ray. But I'll get to that and I'll get to that once I go over hyper skills. Next up we have a new skill, Holy Water. Holy Water is a skill when Angel Ray hits a it's a monster seven times, you activate one Holy Water. And you can use this Holy Water to create Holy Water on the map, in which will provide all this water here. And if you press up on the water, then your health is increased by 5% plus an additional 5% for every 2500 intelligence that you have. The base duration is 5 seconds, and the cooldown is 10 seconds. The duration is increased by 5 seconds for every 2500 Holy Water you have. From what you saw on the screen, because I have 3 stacks of Holy Water, 3 Holy Waters are able to show up on the screen. So with 1 Holy Water, there's only going to be 1 Holy Water on the screen. And uh, it goes up to 5 stacks, so you can summon 5 Holy Waters on screen. Infinity still does the same thing with a slightly different skill animation. And then we also have Bahamut. And this is what Bahamut looks like now. It's like a holy version of Mur, pretty much. And it will attack as long as your character attacks. Then we have Advanced Bless. Still does the exact same thing, just with a different skill animation. And then we have all the other skills like Maple Warrior and then all the other passive skills that the class has already had before. The hyper skill passives for this class are Holy Shield, Holy Symbol, and Advanced Bless. And then the actives include Vengeance uh, of Angel, which is pretty big for this job. So let me actually talk about it. 
when you use Vengeance of Angel, you're pretty much able to use all of your skills. So keep in mind that there are skills that have received changes. The change skills before, they were known as compassion skills. Compassion skills, for example, would be heal, fountain, dispel, and holy water. The compassion skills will then turn into vision skills, which the vision skills include heal turning into um, an angel attacking skill, which does 410% damage six times. And it will apply a 30 second debuff that reduces the monster's de defense by 40. So this is the 40 IED debuff that was missing from Big Bang and Angel Ray. Here's a quick look at the skill again. Holy Fountain's Vengeance skill is now called Fountain of Angels. You summon a fountain which deals damage instead of heals you. And the damage it does isn't exactly too big. From the looks of it, it is about 120% damage for a total of 5 lines, and you have the summon up for 40 seconds with a cooldown of 20 seconds. This spell turns into Triumph Feather, and Triumph Feather is a 1 minute buff, which looks like it is affected by buff duration, which has feathers like these on the map that will go around and attack mobs, and they do 220% damage for a total of 3 lines. It's basically feathers that spawn around like every 4 seconds. Then we have Holy Blood. For Holy Blood, it is a 3 second buff which increases by 1 second for every 3000 int that you have. It is a 15% damage buff, but it increases your damage taken by 20%. And the HP recovery from skills is decreased by 99%. But your recovery from potions is not affected. So here's what Holy Blood animation looks like, and you just have a 15% damage increase while it is active. Next cyber skill, we got Heaven's Door. Same exact thing with a different animation. Allow me to demonstrate. And then finally, we have Epic Adventure. Same thing as before. So for fifth job changes, the Angels of Libra skill, which is, I believe, their their second fifth job skill they received. Before, you would either choose between the healing mode or the attacking mode, depending on if you had Vengeance active or not. But now, the cooldown of the skill has been increased from 2 minutes to 3 minutes, but when you use it, both of the Angels will be used and you will receive effects from both of them, the healing one and the damage one. Then we go over to Barog because I still have to show some things. Here is the effect that comes from heal, the new heal, uh, which is the angelic skill, which provides the IED debuff on the mob. And then also a new thing that I did not talk about, but with Angel Ray, it goes up to five stacks of something and these stacks include final damage. The final damage from heal was removed and it was moved to Angel Ray instead. Each stack is 2% final damage on the mob. So 2 times 5 is pretty much equal to 10. So bishops became more free to use skills with Vengeance of Angel up, but there are some skills that you still need to use in parties that, you know, can't use when Vengeance of Angel are active, such as Dispel. Dispel is pretty important in certain boss fights and even Fountain can be pretty important in certain boss fights, as well as Holy Water. Really the main thing between uh, being off of Vengeance and being on Vengeance is that when you're on Vengeance, you just can't really heal your party as much, and that's mostly about it. And you can't dispel them, get rid of the status effects. Main fifth job skill chains for all mages is Unreliable Memory. So basically how it works is you have this skill called Memory Choice, which you can choose one of six different skills to use with Unreliable Memory, which one of them is Infinity, which is the most important one anyway. That's the main one that you would use. So the other skill choices besides Infinity, though, are Genesis, Angel Ray, Big Bang, Divine Protection, and Fountain. So we're going to go ahead and choose Infinity by pressing 5 and the skill changes to infinity. And the cooldown of the skill is up to basically twice as long as infinity's cooldown, so up to six minutes. But there is a percentage chance 
that the cooldown will be lower than usual, which the chance for the cooldown reduction will be posted in the description below on the orangemushroom.net blog post. So for example, I will use Unreliable Memory on my Bishop and it will cast Infinity. And Infinity has a cooldown of a bit over three minutes. That's about it. That is all I have to show for Bishop. It is now Archer time, and the first Archer we have is Bowmaster. So for first job, there's only four skills. Also, you cannot hotkey this uh, character's flash jump, and the flash jump is very, very blue. There's also the up jump, which does have the same command of double tapping the up key, and yes, it still feels as bad as it did before. But we also have Arrow Blow, and this is what the new Arrow Blow looks like, which honestly, this is a lot better than the old one, because it's actually going through the mobs with the arrows now. Second job, Bomb Arrow has been removed, and it has been replaced by with Arrows of Wind. This is what Arrows of Wind looks like right here. The range is a lot wider than it seems. It doesn't really look like it's um that wide, but it can go pretty far. And then we also have Retreat Shot, which is right here. It is the same as before, but it is just very, very blue now. Next go I have to showcase is Quiver Cartridge, which instead of having all three arrows at second job, uh, well, one, they got rid of Poison Arrow. Now you unlock a Blood Arrow at fourth job. So now you just have your regular additional attack arrows that have a 30% chance of popping out whenever you use attacks and they do 220% damage whenever they do pop out. We have Bow Acceleration, which I believe was already a passive before, but I'll still note now that it is a passive. The attack speed is a passive, and Soul Arrow is also a passive now instead of an active skill. You gain 30 attack, and it will not use arrows when you learn, when you put levels into the skill. And then the other three skills are exactly the same. Moving on, we got third job. First skill I will showcase is Arrow Platter. Arrow Platter has a much different look than it does before, and the arrows on it are very, very blue. You can also change the direction of the skill you want to use, but also keep in mind as a huge warning, this attack is still, and I repeat, still server-sided. You cannot hit monsters close to you if your ping is high. You can also install Arrow Platter by pressing the NPC track key, but if you right click it, you can change the command to where you only have to press the attack key. So right now I have it set to attack key, so I just have to install it, press the attack key, and then boom. There we go, we have an installed Arrow Platter, and it's not hitting anything. Next up we have a toggle called Flash Mirage. Basically, the there are silhouettes that come out after hitting enemies about 15 times. So we will continue to hit enemies until the Mirages do come out. And when they do come out, the after images will show up. And uh, there, I believe there are a few of them that will come out and hit some mobs. Yeah, three of them. They come out, shoot arrows, and the arrows deal 420% damage four times. There's Phoenix. This class was going with a bunch of the blue color scheme, but then we've got Phoenix, which is all red and orange. I, I don't know. It does attack mobs though, as per usual. As you can see, that's what their attack animation looks like now. And the next up, we've got Quiver Flow. It has an 80 second cooldown with a 60 second duration, but how it works is you can go ahead and go anywhere you want on the map, press the button again, and you will teleport to where you were at before. You know, it's really weird for archers to get a skill like that, but they just have a skill that's like that now. The cooldown on teleporting to that mark is 3 seconds. Then every other skill is passive. There's the toggle that gives the 40 attack and the 30% final damage, but everything else is basically the same. Moving on to fourth job, we have Hurricane which is very blue now, and there is more wings applied to it. Also, with the whole deal with uh, Flash Mirage, 10 hits with Hurricane is equivalent to one attack to activate Flash Mirage. 
And the same is also applied for arrow platter. And then we have arrow stream. Massive vertical range increase. Massive compared to what it was like before. It's actually insanely big. And while I was using arrow stream, uh, you saw the effect of Flash Mirage 2, which has four silhouettes now, four after images instead of three, and the amount of hits was decreased from 15 to 10. And then the amount of damage that the arrows do was also increased from 420% to 540%. It still does the same amount of lines. We have Advanced Quiver, which you can change what you want to use between the regular attacking arrows and the blood arrows. Which again, the poison arrows have been removed and you can swap whichever arrow you want to use without any sort of cooldown. You've got Sharp Eyes, does the exact same thing. Just with a slightly different skill animation. Same with Maple Warrior. And then everything else is still the same as before. They're all passives. The hyper passives are still the same. We've got Sharp Eyes, we've got Arrow Stream, and we got Hurricane. And then for the actives, we have a Preparation, which literally does the exact same thing as before. It is just blue now. A 50 attack, 100% stance, 20% boss buff for 30 seconds with a 90 second cooldown. And then we've got Wind of Frey, which has received a very big visual change. And it also increases the damage dealt with Arrow Platter. Here is a demonstration of Wind of Frey. It's slightly bigger, but the animation is definitely different. And then finally, we have Epic Adventure Archer Edition. Different skill animation, but it's just green. Now we'll be going to some fifth job changes. The biggest change that this class received at fifth job is with After Image Shot and Humane Speed. So before, the skill had a 60 second cooldown with a 3 second duration of just really fast arrows. Well now that duration has been increased to 30 seconds, but the cooldown has also been increased to 120 seconds to match with the other 2 fifth job skills that have a 2 minute cooldown. So overall, the class received a bunch of bursts, which I will be demonstrating in Barog right now. Turning on the analysis, buffing up. Making sure I use arrow platter from a distance because of the ping, which it's not even hitting because it's still really messed up in the test server right now. So I will fix the position of that, install it, and then use hurricane. And we will also see the rate at which the uh, flash mirages will activate. As you can tell, they're coming out somewhat often. Not bad at all. But I also think it's because I'm hitting Barog's head as well, and that just most certainly makes a difference. So turning that off, looking at the damage dealt, not too accurate because it is Barog, but Inhumane Speed did do about 20% damage during the burst, and Flash Mirage did almost 10%. Overall, because of After Image Shot's changes, Bowmaster definitely got a lot stronger with 5th Job, and their overall damage was also increased due to the addition of Flash Mirage. And uh, that's about it for this class. Also, Arrow Platter in the test server was really fucked if you saw my installations. It only hit a total of 11 times. And I'm pretty sure that was when I was trying to install the skill. Next up, we've got Marksman. The first job, again, the exact same as Bowmaster. You got Arrow Blow, which goes through mobs now instead of just stopping at one enemy it attacks. And then it's Flash Jump and the Up Jump, which this time it is now a little bit of orange instead of the blue that it was before. The blue went ahead and just got moved to Bowmaster. For our second job, we have Pierce. And Pierce is going to be your main mobbing skill for this whole entire class. It just gets better at third job and fourth job. Because, as you can see, for a second job skill, it's pretty wild. And the skill's range goes very, very far. The only problem is, there is still no vertical range to it. Then we have a treat shot, which is exactly what Bowmasters have. But, Marksman's receive a treat shot in replace, to replace the net skill that they had. So, the net skill for Marksman will no longer exist. 
And then Booster became passive, and it now gives 20 decks. And Soul Arrow is also passive, and everything else is still the same. Alright, now for third job skills. First, we have Enhanced Arrow, which when you use Pierce three times, the fourth Pierce that you use will be the enhanced version of it. And this is what it looks like. You can tell it's definitely a lot different compared to this version of it right here. Use it again. And then we have Freezer, which is the summon, the cold frost bird. And there's actually a skill with it called Freezer Wings, which hits eight mobs and does 300% damage six times with a 12 second cooldown. Here's what the skill looks like. I really don't like the whole idea behind the skill because it reminds me of Dark Knight's Beholder skills, but with Freezer Rings, Freezer, Freezer Wings, you cannot use it while you are in the middle of a skill animation. Versus with Dark Knight's Beholder, Beholder Shock, you can use that literally at any given time, even if you are using a skill. Next up, we got Bolt Flow. It's a different name, but the ex exact same concept as Bowmaster's teleport skill. You set a teleporter on the map, you hit the skill again, you teleport to it, and that's how it is. It has a 60 second duration with an 80 second cooldown, and the teleport cooldown is 3 seconds. Next up we got Painkiller. Same as before, it literally does the exact same thing, just with a different animation. And then we have Extreme Archery for Crossbow, which gives 20% crit damage but reduces your evasion. And then uh, all the other passives are still the same. Now for fourth job. First up, we've got Piercing 2. So Piercing in general is enhanced. Uh, right now, I currently have the Enhanced Arrow activated. So here is the enhanced version of Pierce 2. Has a much bigger vertical range, and I'm pretty sure that is for the Enhanced Arrow only. Um, but here's what Pierce 2 naturally looks like. There are bits here and there which I'm not really able to see, at least with my eyes, but the vertical range on the skill is a little higher, a little bit higher compared to before. Uh, still kind of ass though, like I can do that, but let's say I want to we'll wait for some mobs to go over here, use Peace Arrow again, I was able to hit down here and up here, but mainly because of these mobs being a little big. Next up, we've got Snipe, does 465% damage 9 times, with, and it also has 25% IED and 100% crit rate when you use it. And then once we get to the enhanced version of it, it does 510% damage 10 times, and it also applies the Focus On buff along with Pierce, which I'll talk about that in a second. And uh, it looks like it's about it, but anyway, here is the enhanced Snipe right here. So for the advanced enhanced arrow, um, it appears that with Pierce 2, whenever you use it, Pierce 2 will apply additional attacks that do 220% damage on uh, 10 mobs up to 10 times. It's kind of hard to demonstrate there because these guys get hit with, uh, these guys just get one shot. And then with Snipe, when you use it, they will apply a debuff to a boss or just any sort of monster, which does an additional... 105% damage three times. Let's demonstrate that at Barog. There's the debuff right there. As you can see, it's some um, some pretty small damage. It's like the three lines of like 400, 500Ks, but they're there. You can notice the enhanced snipe when the, the crossbow gets a little bigger. It's more red and the background becomes a tad bit darker. And then let's test out piercing. I don't really see too many additional attacks, but it seems like every hit I'm doing with Pierce, even though I'm completely on the ground, it's able to hit the head of Barog. When you used Enhanced Snipe or Enhanced Pierce, you will receive the Focus On buff every time. And it is a 5 second buff that provides 12% final damage and 30% IED. There's also Arrow Illusion. 
The skill still does the same thing as before. Nothing about it has really changed. It's got a bunch of health to it, about 100,000 in the last 30 seconds. I also want to point out that the focus on buff is pretty much what replaces Rangefinder, I believe, because Rangefinder is no longer part of the class. Focus on is when you have the yellow aura at the bottom after you use an enhanced skill. Next up, we've got Sharp Eyes. Same thing as before. Hero's Will is the same. I think it's the first class to talk about Hero's Will with, but there's genuinely nothing different with that. April Warrior is the same, different animation, and then we have all the other same passives. Going through with the Hyper Skills now, we've got Sharp Eyes, Pierce, and Snipe. Instead of cooldown cutter, because Snipe now no longer has a cooldown, you get plus one attack lines with Snipe. Hyper skills are the exact same thing. You've got Bullseye, which is the 140 buff. We have a long range two shot. The animation of it did change a little bit. I do believe that the hitbox is probably a little different too, but I'm not too sure about that. And then we have Epic Adventurer, which does the exact same thing as before, which is green. Fifth job skill changes, since the whole focus on system exists, you don't only get the focus on buff from using enhanced pierce and enhanced snipe. You also get it from attacking with every single fifth job skill, except for split shot. Split shot does not apply focus on, but every other skill does. Allow me to demonstrate. We have a charged arrow. Focus on. We use true sniping. Wait for the debuff to go away. Or the buff to go away. Hit once. Focus on. And then repeating crossbow cartridge. Hit once. Focus on. That is all I have to show for Marksman. Just know this class no longer really has the whole range finder mechanic to it. That's the main thing, the most important thing. They've just replaced it with the new focus on feature instead. All right, going into the thieves. The first class I have to showcase is Night Lord. And for first job, we've got double stab, but I'll cover this in the shadower section. We got lucky seven. Lucky 7 is a mobbing skill now, and it looks kind of weird. You just throw stars at enemies, but it's not like the throw where the throwing is precise. You just throw them. No precision at all. You just throw the stars. And it's all purple now. And uh, it actually mobs, though, which is decent. It hits a total of uh, three lines, 110% damage, and it attacks five mobs. And then the other skill I have to showcase is Dark Sight. Which, there is a different casting animation, but overall the skill is still pretty much the same. And then other than that, we have Haste, which is now passive. And uh, the Flash Jump is Key Boundable. I believe all Thieves and all Pirates have Keybind Flash Jump, but I will look over and make sure that is the case. Now for second job, the first skill I have to showcase is Shuriken Blast. It does an initial 560% damage on uh, Touch, on Impact. And then it will have an explosion, which deals 105% damage on uh, six mobs, six times. The impact damage is only applied to one mob only, unfortunately. Next up, we have the Wind Talisman, which is just like the pushing skill from before. It just looks a little different now. And then we've got Mark of Assassin, which is the exact same thing as the current Mark of Assassin, which when you attack, there will be certain throwing stars that will go around in the mobs. There are two new movement skills at second job. We have Shadow Rush and Shadow Leap. Shadow Rush, you uh, rush over a little bit and it has a five second cooldown. It's a very, very small rush, but it can still be useful in bosses. Whenever you do attack every now and then and you inflict the, the Night Lord mark on enemies, the cooldown will be reduced by one second. And then we also have Shadow Leap, which is basically Shadow Web. They removed Shadow Web from third job. We just have Shadow Leap instead. It does not come with any sort of attack, but at the same time, Shadow Leap does not have a cooldown. And then for the second job passives, they're all pretty much the same. Booster is a passive and now provides 20 luck. 
All right, moving on to third job. First skill we got is triple throw. It is the same triple throw as before, just with a different cast animation and a different hitting animation as well. And then we got Shuriken Challenge, which is like Showdown Junior. Because you throw this giant shuriken at enemies, but without like all of the scrolls that are by it. And that's a pretty decent hitbox though. I'm not really sure how I feel about this skill in comparison to the older job skill. It's not that bad. And then we've got Dark Flare, which is a lot different from the old Dark Flare. Put a shuriken on the ground. And it actually has a decent range, and whenever it procs, which it looks like it procs a lot, it hits three mobs at once instead of one. It has a 60 second duration and a 60 second cooldown. Next up we got the new Shadow Partner, which does the exact same thing as before, but it looks different. Why it's that color for Night Lord, I don't know. I don't know why they could, they can maybe easily make this purple, but again, it's still the test server. They might still have time to make it purple for Night Lord on official release, but we will see. Spirit Claw is now a passive. It gives 10 attack passively, and when you have this skill leveled up, you will no longer consume any stars. Then all the other skills are the same. That's it for third job. Now we got fourth job. First skill I want to show is Quad Throw. The character does the same animation still, but the skill effect and the hitting effect is completely different. And then we got Showdown Challenge, and geez, did this skill get a big change. First things first, the hitbox on Showdown Challenge is massively buffed. And every five seconds when using Showdown Challenge, there will be six shurikens that come out and attack enemies. And if more than one shuriken attacks the same enemy, the second and later shurikens will have a 30% reduced final damage on that exact same enemy. Each shuriken does 70% damage six times. And the EXP and the drop debuff on the mob will still remain. Mark of the Night Lord is still pretty much the same, but we have this new Sudden Raid. And here's what it looks like. It looks more destructive than before, in my opinion. It is a lot faster, but I might be the only person who thinks that. Next up, we got Purge Area. There is no cast animation for this skill, and it still does the same thing as before. I just wanted to show the new animation for it. Everything else, still pretty much the same. There is a new animation for Fake, though. There's a 45% chance for me to proc it, and there we go right there. That was kind of hard to see, so I did it again right there. Proc it one more time, hopefully. Hopefully. Let's wait for it. There we go. Hyper skills. The three skills that are affected by passives are Showdown, Pergeria, and Quattro. And then for actives, we have Leading Toxin, which is still the same as before. It has a different skill animation, though. And then we have Four Seasons, which also has a different skill animation to fit the class's more purple theme. I think the hitbox might be a little different, but I have not used the skill enough to figure out if that is the case. And there is also Epic Adventurer, which for Thieves, it is now different animation, but purple still. Unfortunately, this video was all about skill changes, and because Nightlord's fifth job did not receive any skill changes, I would not be going over this class's fifth job skills. So Nightlord is finished. It is now time to cover Shadow Word. So, first job, we have uh, Lucky 7, but that was covered in the Night Lord section. So we're gonna cover Double Stab now. Double Stab looks really weird. It doesn't really look like you're doing much of any stabbing. It's just an effect that appears above you. But hey, at least it's killed mobs now. It does 165% damage two times on five mobs. Other first job changes, we have a different cast animation for Dark Sight. That's about it. Haste is now a passive skill. And uh, I do want to mention that Shadowers do have a key bindable flash jump. So, second job, we got Savage Blow. I actually like this one more than the old Savage Blow. I think it looks pretty decent. But that's about it for that. 
Next up, for their critical edge skill, it just now passively increases your critical rate and critical damage. It doesn't make it go up the way it did anymore, like it used to. That just, that really just wasn't valid. I, I didn't like that, so I'm glad it changed pretty much. Uh, next up, we got Steel. Steel is a toggle skill on off. When you are attacking monsters, there is a 10% chance that that monster will drop a potion that recovers your HP and your MP. Only by a little bit. If you use steel on boss monsters, they will drop a potion that will also give you a 30 attack buff for 3 minutes. And at second job, Shadower also receives an up jump. It is shown by this skill right here. The up jump is exactly the same keys as your blast jump. You just jump, hold the up arrow key, and then press the jump button again. Booster is now a passive with an extra 20 luck applied to it, and then everything else is still pretty much the same. Now for third job, we got Edge Carnival. It is a mobbing skill now, and here's what it looks like. A little bit of lag there. A lot better than before, and it's really nice for mobbing, and it also hits 8 mobs. You got the usual dash skill, the Spellheim. Looks a little different, but that's all. And then we got Pickpocket and Meso Explosion, which they pretty much do the same thing. Nothing's really different. You just pickpocket, get some mobs on the floor, or get some mesos on the floor, and then you use Meso Explosion to throw the mesos at those mobs. Next up we got Dark Flare. So Night Lord's Dark Flare had a shuriken on the ground. So Shadow Wars Dark Flare will have a dagger on the ground and it's three enemies it procs very often has a 60 second duration with a 60 second cooldown and then we got shadow partner i was complaining about the color scheme for night lord because it's all red and everything but for shadower it definitely fits a lot better here i just think the night lord one should be purple but other than, other than that the skill is still the same Advanced Dark Sight is the same as before, but then we have a new skill here called Into Darkness. What this skill does is you teleport to the nearest monster in range and you will automatically enter Dark Sight. This skill shares the same cooldown with Dark Sight. This is a really, really nice skill to use while mobbing, and it can also be very useful for bossing as well. Last three skills, these are passives and they're still pretty much the same. That's it for third job. So moving on over to fourth job, we've got Assassinate. Now, Assassinate still skill does the same thing pretty much, but skills effects, they look kind of weird. Not exactly the biggest fan of them, especially with the whole paintbrush final attack we got going on right here. But it seems like the hitbox of the skill is about as wide as the paintbrush is. I call it the paper. It's the final attack. Something like that. And then we got Boomerang Step. They really increased the vertical range on the skill, I feel like. It's still not that great, but you can tell you can still tell that it is better than before. But the skill overall pretty much is the exact same. And next up we've got Bloody Pocket and Bloody Explosion. Now, Bloody Pocket is a toggle skill, and it replaces Pickpocket. When you attack monsters, there is a chance for them to drop Bloody Coins, which are these red coins. You can get up to 15 of them. And then Meso, Meso Explosion then turns into Bloody Explosion, in which you will absorb the coins. You will absorb all of the coins, and you will use that to attack one enemy. And then when you have that, when, when you do attack that one enemy, you receive what is known as the Murderous Intent buff, which your final attack of Assassinate becomes red and it deals 100% more final damage. Bloody Explosion consumes all of the coins that is on the map. It does a total of 240% damage for five to, for five lines, but with you know the amount of coins on the map, you consume one coin and you gain 10% damage passively. So with all 15 coins, the skill's damage will increase from 240% to 290%. And then when you use it, once again, you get the Murderous Intent buff. 
which pretty much is gone right after you use your last bit of assassinate. So in order to boss on the Shadower now, you want to have uh, the coins, the bloody coins, and then you want to use uh, bloody explosion, get the murderers and send buff, assassinate gone, use bloody explosion again. I would say this is probably it's worth doing, mainly because of the uh, final damage you receive on assassinate. No matter how many coins you get after you use assassinate, it is still best to just use bloody explosion after you use assassinate. I could be wrong though. This is just how I feel is the best way to use this. Only because of the massive damage buff you receive on, on assassinate with it. Because with it, I do almost up to 7 mil lines, but without it, it's like 3 mil lines, 3.5. And then once again, we have Sudden Raid. Completely different skill animation, and it's a lot faster. Next up, we have Smoke Screen, which pretty much is the same thing, but there is a different skill animation for Smoke Screen. And of course, has the same effect. Enemies within the Smoke Screen will take more critical damage, and that's it. But you will also receive less damage as well, of course. Then there's a new animation for Fake, just like there was for Night Lord. Let me try to activate it real quick. This might take a little bit. There we go. Got it. Other than that, all of the other passives are still the same. So going into hyper skills, we have for passive, we have a meso explosion, or it just says explosion on here. So it seems like it's probably, it probably works for bloody explosion as well. Um, and then we have a boomerang step, we have assassinate. For the active hyper skills, we have coin toss, which this is now an on off toggle skill. When you hit a critical hit, your critical rates and your critical damage is increased by 5%. And it's just permanently increased this way until you decide to turn coin toss off. And the next up we have Veil of Shadows, which I think has a much wider range to it. The vertical range should be about the same, but the horizontal range looks a little wider. I could be wrong though. That's just how I that's how I see the skill. And then lastly. We got Epic Adventure, same exact thing, different animation, it's purple, does the same thing. So, the fifth job skill changes, I hope I am able to demonstrate these properly. There are skill changes to three of the four fifth job skills. We have changes to Eviscerate, Sonic Blow, and Demon Slashing Shadow Formation. So I'll talk about them first. With Sonic Blow, the cooldown has been decreased from 80 seconds to 45 seconds, and it applies wound stacks to bosses. The reason why it is able to do this is because now you can cancel Sonic Blow at any time you want using Eviscerate, which has a 2 second iframe with a 14 second cooldown. When you cancel the attack using Eviscerate, then however many leftover attacks there are of Sonic Blow, the cooldown of the skill will be decreased by 2.5% per leftover attack. And then finally, with the Demon Slashing Shadow Formation, I hate the name of the skill, you can instantly call the boss whenever you want while the skill is active, just because the boss does almost all of the skill's damage. So now I will demonstrate Sonic Blow and Eviscerate at the same time. As you saw, I was able to cancel it, use the Eviscerate, and Sonic Blow's cooldown is a lot lower than the instead of 45 seconds. And then with the Shadow Formation skill, it goes by pretty slowly, but I'll press it again. Instantly call the boss. Overall, Shadow War received a lot of changes, but there are a good handful of Shadow War players who are not very happy about the changes, mainly because it does not feel very fluid at all to deal with Bloody Explosion and Assassinate. I feel the same way, and also, getting the Murderous Intent buff is ping reliant, so sometimes you can use a Bloody Explosion, and the last set of Assassinate will not be red and will not have the 100% final damage debuff. This is definitely an issue, and there are plenty of Shadow players who are not very happy with it, but over time, we will see if they decide to change it. And that is all I have to showcase for Shadow War. For our last Explorer Thief, we've got Dual Blade. 
our dual blade for first job i'll be covering over these two tabs second job these two and then third and fourth and fifth in their respective tabs. so first job we got this skill this mobbing skill pretty much hits the exact same well i have it enhanced right now with the uh, Enhancer from first job plus so it hits three lines with a total of 120% damage per line on four enemies Dark slight cast animation has also changed. It's just like the other thieves And dual blade just like the other thieves can hotkey their flash jumps The passive here in the passive here still pretty much the same thing. This is mastery um, self haste is a passive now, and then dual blades tornado spin has had its animation changed. It's actually kind of hard to see dual blade spinning because the skill effect doesn't really look like the character is spinning anymore. But one thing that was pointed out to me was that if you turn down your skill settings, you can actually see that your character is still spinning. And that's it for first job. Now moving on to second job, we have Fatal Blow, 108% damage seven times has a completely new scale animation to it. Then we have Slash Storm, which looks a little bit like this. But of course, I do have it enhanced right now. So the enhanced version of Slash Storm currently provides 220% damage for three lines on six enemies. We also have Flying Assaulter, and Flying Assaulter can be chained with the Tornado Spin. It make for some pretty decent combos, even while training as well. Next up, we got Flashbang, but I'll be showcasing this at Barog. Flashbang has a 100% chance to activate a debuff on the enemy for 50 seconds. And with this debuff, the enemy's accuracy is decreased by 20% and your skill damage is increased by 10%. This is what the Flashbang debuff looks like. Passives include Karma, Physical Training, Booster is now a passive and now gives 20 luck. And then we've got Venom, which is a passive debuff. That's it for second job. Moving on, we've got third job. The first skill is Bloody Storm, which just looks like a little bit of a weaker Blade Fury, but it's a lot better than the old Bloody Storm that this class used to have. For the next skill, there's Blade Ascension, which looks very big, but the hitbox does most certainly not follow the animation of the skill. Overall, effectiveness, it still does the exact same thing. Then we got Chains of Hell, which I'll be showing at Barog, which does the same thing, but I'm showing it here because I would have one shot at those other mobs. And uh, here's Chains of Hell. And of course, you'll be invincible when casting the skill, and you will have even longer invincibility when you actually use the skill. Next skill, Mirror Imaging. It's Shadow Partner, but for dual blades. And all the other skills, same as before, that's it for third job. Now we have fourth job, which in my opinion which in my opinion has some of the most unnecessary skill changes ever made. First up, we got Blade Fury. I don't think Blade Fury looks that bad. This is uh pretty decent. I'm not sure if there's a hitbox change to it, but it doesn't look too awful. And then we have Phantom Blow. So, this skill now hits three enemies, but it looks like that. Some people might be okay with it, and that's fine, but <laughs> I do think this new Phantom Blow animation does look a little worse. It reminds me of that one third job skill from Dumble Rear, but that is just what I personally believe. And we got Final Cut, which is most certainly the worst skill animation change ever. It charges up like this, and then attack like that you i think there was some sort of dagger that hit the mobs you no longer move while using final cut but it was like very blue and doesn't really fit with this class of skill kit in my opinion and then you have these allies which don't really look too bad honestly that are on top of you while the final cut buff is active and then we got sudden raid it's a lot faster skill animation is different that's pretty much it and then we got dummy effect which has a slightly different animation. This one isn't even that bad, actually. Which I believe I need mirror imaging active to even use dummy effect. So there we go. Looks pretty cool, but probably the only fourth job skill change that I actually like. Everything else is still pretty much the same. 
ranging from Maple Warrior to Hero's Will, and then see all the other passives that this class has. So, for Hyper Skills passives, the Bloody Storm Hypers have been removed, and they have been replaced by Blade Ascension, which gives 20 IED, 20% damage, and a plus 1 attack lines. I don't think any of these are worth taking, so it's still as useless as Bloody Storm, but I'm kind of ignorant when it comes to knowing much about Dual Blade, so I could be wrong, but we still have Blade Fury and Phantom Blade. For the active Hyper skills, we have Hidden Blade, a different skill animation, but it still does the same thing. There is like a really small blue dagger that is on top of your head while the skill is active. Then we have Azura. Which Azura looks a little something like this. I don't think it looks that bad. It does look a little different from what was shown in the actual showcase trailer, which it was a lot more pink. But um, I do like this one. It doesn't really look too bad. And that's all I gotta say. An epic adventurer with the purple skill looks a little different in the animation. It still does the exact same thing. For 5th job skill changes, only one class got changed, or only one skill out of the four got changed, and it, that is Blade Storm, Blade Tempest. They cut the duration from 10 seconds to 5 seconds, but they compressed the damage. I'll be doing a battle analysis going over the new Blade Tempest. it up it did a total of 434 lines though i believe somebody told me that the current blade tempest in game right now does like 494 lines over 10 seconds um so i'm not exactly sure if that is right but i would like to have some feedback on how that is because i don't have an actual blade i can use on the live server to really test that that is it for dual blade We are now in the pirates, In the first pirate I will cover will be Corsair. We got Somersault Kick, but I'll cover that in the Buccaneer section. We got Double Shot. So Double Shot is actually a mobbing skill at first job. It does 260% damage two times, and it can hit up to six enemies. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. It's actually pretty good, honestly. Not bad at all. And then as far as the other skills are concerned, the skill does have a hot key will flash jump. You can keep on the flash jump. So it'll be a lot better for people who prefer it that way. We got dash, which is the same as before. It just looks a little different when you activate it. And the running speed or the, the running on the ground is a little different as well. Then we got our two usual passives that we had before, and that is it for first job. All right, second job. First skill we got is Magnum Shot. It does 205% damage three times on six enemies. And then we got Swift Fire, aka Triple Shot, which does 201% damage three times on one enemy. I don't know why they had to nerf the skill from two enemies to one from first shot, but they did. Next though, we got Summon Crew. There are two different crew members you can summon. At second job, you only have one of them. But at third job, you will have both of them. And then after third job, you can summon them both at the same time. So here's your first crew member. This crew member shoots two bullets, and each bullet does 150% damage three times. When you use this skill, it has a 45 second cooldown, but it has a duration of 120 seconds. There is no longer any RNG for which crew member you summon. Then we have Backstep Shot, pretty self-explanatory. Does 210% damage, fires you backwards. And then wings, as per usual, you can use it to shoot yourself upward, and you can hold the skill button again to fly. You can also use the skill midair, which I don't know if you could do this before the change, but hey, you could do it now, or you can still do it. We also have infinite bullets, the skill that doesn't consume bullets when you use skills. It is now passive, a second job skill. You get 10 attack passively, and it doesn't even consume any bullets at all. 
So you only need one pack of bullets, just like with Night Lord, where you only need one pack of stars. And all of the passives are still the same as ever. There is Booster, actually, which gives a passive of 20 decks, and that's it. Third job, you've got Double Barrel Shot. 480% damage, two times, hits eight enemies. And it still feels as hard hitting as it always did. And then we have Bullet Smash, same skill as before. It is a knockback skill and it does 734% damage on six enemies. I don't know why, but it looks like it's a little thinner in terms of its attack range, but maybe that's just me. Next up, we have Siege Bummer. It is a 30 second summon with a 10 second cooldown. This skill completely replaces the octopus summon, sadly. So no more octopus at third job or even fourth job anymore. It has the ability to shoot enemies forward with the front cannon and backwards with the back cannon. Now there's Lucky Dice, which has a different skill icon and a different skill animation, but overall, the skills effect is still the same. The cooldown was massively reduced to 60 seconds, and if you roll a 1, it's a 30 second cooldown. Next up, we've got a symbol crew with another summon. And this summon fires bombs that do 170% damage 4 times on up to 4 enemies. And the other summon still pretty much does the same thing, but I do believe it is a little stronger. It says 200% right there, but right here, yeah, 150%. So it is stronger at third job. Also, one of the crew members will eat a status debuff if you do get inflicted by one. But it will not be able to eat one again until you resummon them. So you have up to kind of two free, almost heroes will worthy skills when you summon these mobs. Or summon these crew members. And then we just got the passives, 60 attack, and then the other two passives, which I'm pretty sure aren't really much different. And that's it for third job. Then we got fourth job, which has a long list of like 15 skills, but we'll go ahead and start up top. Rapid fire. Rapid fire looks a lot better now, in my opinion. You still can't jump with it though, so Bowmaster beats them in that. Next up, we got Headshot, very powerful attack, 525% damage on 12 mobs, 12 times, not on 12 mobs, on one mob, you get a 60% IED debuff when using this skill that applies to this skill only and an additional 100% crit rate. And that's what it looks like. And it only has a 5 second cooldown, very powerful skill. Next up, we got Fuselod, which is a, well, AKA Eight Legs Easton, but it does a lot of damage, 649% on eight mobs, and it looks like this. No more Octopus, so rest in peace to that. Though, from the looks of it, I'm not really sure about the horizontal range of the skill, if it's any different or not compared to the Octopus, but the vertical range definitely seems much better than before. You can also prevent super knockback from attacks if you hold the skill down and use it. Wrong skill. You hold the skill down and use it. But as you can tell, the skill is a lot smaller. This is without holding down, and this is with holding down. As you can see as I alternate between the two, there is a massive difference. But remember, use it, to, uh, use it while holding down if you don't want to get hit by super knockback attacks. Quick draw is now passive. So there is an 8% chance to activate Quick Draw whenever attacking, so we will try to do that with Rapid Fire. We have Quick Draw, and now we will use Headshot for a 25% increased final damage boost. Now we got Battleship Bomber. This skill lasts for 60 seconds with a 15 second cooldown, and you could summon up to two of them. So here's one right now. It will fire cannons that hit three lines of 445% damage, but if there is a sign of Bombard, which, there we go, um, it will do the same amount of damage, but a lot more frequently. And I can also summon a second battleship for it to do the exact same as well. But with this sign active, the battleships will only be doing damage where the sign is. 
The next skill I will go to Balrog to demonstrate because it is a debuff, continuous aiming. When you throw it at an enemy, you receive a 25% battle damage boost. That's what the debuff looks like right there. Skill has no cooldown. Next up, you got Battleship Nautilus, which looks a lot more destructive now, but I'm not sure if the damage has changed much. When you use that skill while it is on cooldown, the final damage on Captain Dignity's final attack will be increased by 30%. And for the fourth job buff that you can use, there is Pirate Style. It is a three minute buff, which increases your attack by 20%. Increases your status resist by 20% or 30%, I'm sorry, plus 30, and your stance by 60%. We also have a crew commander ship, which increases the final damage of your summon crew by 15%, and a whole bunch of other things that I believe is still already it still already does gain. But you also have your attack increased by 45, crit damage by 5%, speed by 30, and your damage taken is decreased by 15% with the passive boost of 5,000 HP and 25% critical damage. Then these last skills, Maple Warrior, Hero's Will, Double Lucky Dice, and uh, this Captain skill right here, Counter Attack, it all still works the same way. Hyper skill passives will boost Double Lucky Dice, Rapid Fire, and Headshot. The first active hyper skill is called Unwearying Nectar, it increases your HP by 99% when you use it, and uh, for 30 seconds, you also take 15% less damage, and it massively increases the damage of all your summons. These summons include both of your crew members, the Siege Bomber, and the Battleship Bombers. Each summon with the skill active gets around a 30-50% to 50 final damage boost, depending on the summon. One thing that I do have in mind about this skill though, is if the damage reduction will help you tank attacks from bosses, percent HP wise. So we will be testing this at Chaos Occam to see if the arms will still one shot me. So we'll go ahead and use the hyper skill. And uh, we'll see what happens. Still one shot. Next up, we've got Strange Bomb. It hits 15 enemies and does 400% damage 12 times with a 15 second cooldown. That's what the hyper skill looks like. And then we've got the pirate version of Epic Adventurer, which is just a little pink. Definitely pink, but still the same effect as all the other jobs, and that is it. Fifth job skill changes to bullet party only, and I do not have to demonstrate this on a boss. So before, you'd have to continuously tap bullet party when you have it active to be able to have it out for as long as possible. But now, you can just use bullet party and uh, tap it once, the whole skill just sets off. I'm not touching anything on my keyboard right now, at all. And we have it. That is it for Corsair. Next up, we've got Buccaneer. Buccaneer received the most changes out of all of the jobs in this update, so it will probably be the longest section in this video. For our first job, there's Double Shot, but I covered that in the Corsair section, so we got Somersault Kick. Somersault is a little different. It hits two lines now, and uh, it does 155% damage for each line. It hits up to six enemies. There's also Flash Jump, which mine is blue because it turns blue at second job. And you can also hotkey the Flash Jump as shown right here. Then of course we have Dash with a different scale animation for casting the skill right here. And uh, moving forward with the skill, the animation on the ground, it's different as well. And then we just got our two usual passive skills, and that is it for first job. So for Buccaneer, their skills are divided into three different sections. We have fighting skills, we have sea serpent skills, and we have assault skills. Now assault skills are not something, is not a thing that I will be talking about until third job. So at second job, 
we will be focusing more on fighting skills and sea serpent skills. For our first skill, we have Shockwave. This is a fighting skill. It does 370% damage two times on six enemies. Second job is also where you get your up jump. Next up, we have the Sea Serpent. Toggling the Sea Serpent will allow you to use Sea Serpent skills, which are usually just passive. They are activated while using fighting skills. For example, I should have no cooldown on any Sea Serpent skills. So with this skill, Sea Serpent Burst, I should be able to activate it the moment I use a fighting skill. Just like that. Sea Serpent Burst has an 11 second cooldown, and while the skill is on cooldown, I cannot use any other Sea Serpent skills until the skill is off of cooldown. We also have Advanced Dash at second job, which still works the same as it did before. So, nothing new with this. Knuckle Booster is a passive. It also increases your strength by 20. And then we got our usual other passives, which haven't really changed. And that's it with second job. So at third job, we unlock one fighting skill, an enhancement to our Sea Serpent skill, and one Assault skill. The first skill we have is Screw Punch. It is a Rush. Because this skill does not belong in any category, it will not trigger any Sea Serpent or Assault Mode skills. Next skill we have is Turning Kick. It does 433% damage 4 times on 8 enemies and there is a 50% chance for it to stun for 7 seconds. This is a fighting skill, so we will trigger Sea Serpent and Assault Mode skills whenever they're able to be used. You get a load of this skill though. It's like the uh, the third job DA skill, but a million times better looking. And it even has a bigger range as well. We have Sea Serpent Enhance 1. The Sea Serpent will now deal 173% damage 6 times on 8 enemies with a 9 second cooldown. And then we got Lucky Dice, but for this class, for some reason, unlike Corsair, still has a 180 second cooldown, while Corsair's has a 60 second cooldown. I don't know why, it just does. Next up, we've got Serpent Stone. So, how Serpent Stone works is you get up to 5 Serpent Stones with this skill. How do you get Serpent Stones? Use a Sea Serpent skill. Once you have five certain serpent stones, you can click on this skill or you can use the skill to then enter assault mode. When you're in assault mode, any fighting skill you use will trigger an assault skill. Assault mode will end after an assault skill is used only one time. So for example, I have five serpent stones. I will use this skill and go into assault mode. Now that I am in Assault Mode, I will use the Assault skill, Serpent Assault, and it looks a little something like this. Serpent Assault hits 423% damage 6 times on 15 monsters. If you would like, you can also put Serpent Stone on Auto Mode. Auto Mode does is whenever you have 5 total Serpent Stones, the skill will automatically trigger Assault Mode. And then the last three skills are passives that this class has already had before. So that's it for third job. Alright, now moving on to fourth job. I will be turning Sea Serpents off until I get to the Sea Serpent skills. So for the first skill I have to demonstrate, we got Fist and Rage. 320% damage and it hits 10 times on up to 3 mobs. Next up is the mobbing skill, we got Hook Bummer. So no more lasers or anything like that. Hook Bummer is a skill that does 565% damage, 6 times on 10 enemies. Extremely powerful skill, and the vertical hitbox on it is very, very good. Skills like this really make me appreciate what they did with this class. Next up we've got Sea Serpent Enhance 2 which allows me to use Sea Serpent Burst 2, as well as a new skill, Sea Serpent Enrage. Sea Serpent Burst 2 is an attack that is the enhanced version of Sea Serpent Burst, and it does 509% damage 8 times on 10 enemies with the 7 second cooldown. It is a lot bigger, as you can see. With the 7 second cooldown, we will patiently wait until it's back up again, so we can have a better demonstration, just like that. 
Next up, we have Sea Serpent Enrage. This skill is activated when you use Fist Enrage. Only Fist Enrage. There we go, just like that. It also has a debuff, so I will show that debuff at Balrog. So here we go. Sea Serpent Enrage. There's the debuff. The skill itself does 203% damage on uh, six enemies for six times. It applies a 15 second debuff to which where all of your skills will deal an additional 20% final damage. And the skill alone has a 4 second cooldown. And again, the skill can only be used by using Fist and Rage. Because Sea Serpent skill cooldowns are shared, you will not be able to activate Sea Serpent Burst while you use Sea Serpent in Rage. Next up, we have Sea Assault in Rage. So what this does is when you enter Assault Mode with the Serpent Stones, you can use this skill. And it is a 5 second summon that continuously deals 144% damage 4 times. The skill attacks up to 15 times and it passively increases Serpent Assault's damage by 100%. Here is a demonstration of Sea Assault Enrage. So we'll go into Assault Mode. And we'll use Fist and Rage. There's the skill right there. And again, it only lasts for 5 seconds. Next up we have Nautilus Strike. 440% damage, 15 enemies, 7 times. Oh, wrong button. Oh. While you use Nautilus Strike, there is a 100% chance that when you fight enemies, that your attacks will do two additional lines of 165% damage for each line. This next skill is called By Precision. It increases your attack by 30% and it's also your mastery skill. Then we got Time Leap which resets the cooldowns of you and your party members. So we use Nautilus Strike, use Time Leap, use Nautilus Strike again. It has a 3 minute cooldown, and party members will also have a 3 minute cooldown from Time Leap as well. And then we have Wind Booster, aka Speed Infusion. Increase attack speed by 2 stages whenever it's used. And then we have all the other usual passives as well, in buffs like Maple Warrior, Hero's Will, Double Lucky Dice. We'll see if we can pull 2 dice here. There we go. Um, and then other passives that the skill is already, or that the class has already had. For the passive hyper skills, we have Double Lucky Dice, Fist and Rage, and Hook Bomber. So for Fist and Rage, we've got 20% damage, 20% boss, one attack, or plus one attack lines. And then for Hook Bomber, we've got 20% damage, plus two mobs hit, and one attack line. For our level 140 hyper skill, we've got Stimulate. It is a 90 second duration buff that increases your damage by 20%. And the cooldown of Sea Serpent Burst, Sea Serpent Enrage, and Serpent Screw, aka Lord of the Deep, have their cooldowns decreased by 50%. So here's an example. So this skill should have a 3.5 second cooldown now. So it should be able to proc twice as often. And then with Sea Serpent Enrage, that skill should have a 2 second cooldown. For the level 160 Hyper, we have Serpent Spirit. So it is a 90 second buff where you acquire something called Sea Serpent's Will when you attack monsters with the Sea Serpent mark from Sea Serpent Enrage. I am saying Sea Serpent a lot of times. Here is the demonstration. So we use Fist Enrage, so we got Sea Serpent Enrage here. So we will hit it and our Sea Serpent stacks or Sea Serpent Will stacks will go up. For every stack we have of Sea Serpent Will, you gain 5% critical damage. So it is essentially a 90 second buff with 25% critical damage. And then we have the Pink Epic Adventurer, which does the same thing as it has always done before. Now going over 5th job skill changes, mainly only 2 5th job skills were changed. We have... Uh, Lightning Form, which is the new Transform, since Transform was removed entirely. And we got Lord of the Deep. Both of those skills were changed. Lightning Form works exactly like Transform. At level 1, it has 51 seconds, and the skill is increased by 1 second per level for the duration. 
and you have a 20% final damage boost. I believe at level 30, it goes up to 26%, since at level 25, it's a 25% final damage boost. You could throw up to three energy orbs that do 468% damage three times continuously, while also having 50% crit rate and 50% IED applied to them. And the whole transformation, the whole lightning form, has a 180 second cooldown. Now demonstrating the effects of lightning form and the lightning balls, here are, here's one of them. Here's another one. And here's one more. It looked like it did more than three lines though. I think it was part of an attack or a skill description that I had missed. Also, you can move around freely in lightning form like you used to with transformation. That hasn't changed. Each of those three energy orbs I threw did about a total of 100 lines. So throwing all three did a total of 300 lines. Last thing I want to point out about lightning form, which they obviously wouldn't get rid of, but I will still bring it up anyway, is that there are still invincibility frames whenever you use the energy balls. So here's the first one, here's the second one, and here's the third one. Next up, we have Lord of the Deep. So energy is no longer a thing for this class anymore, so the skill no longer follows energy consumption. Now the skill will die after attacking 100 times. 3 attacks on a boss monster is equal to just 1 attack. So 300 attacks on a boss monster, the skill will die. It has a 60 second cooldown, but if it, do if it doesn't hit anything, the skill, wrong skill. But if it doesn't hit anything, then the skill will just simply last forever. So let's go demonstrate it some mobs. These are mobs that I easily do not one shot, no matter any sort of circumstance. And because of that, I'm hitting them so many times with the deep that it will expire very, very soon. We're just going to keep attacking them with Lord the Deep until the skill itself expires. It's got 30 seconds left of uptime. So continue the process. It's really weird. There we go. It finally expired with about 17 seconds left on the cooldown. The key to keeping Lord of the Deep up 100% of the time when mobbing is to kill a lot of mobs and one shot with lower the deep. One shotting helps a lot. For a boss demonstration of the skill, there's really not much I have to show because it's so easy to keep it up all the time in bosses. Really, your only concern with the skill will be for mobbing. Because again, three of these attacks is only one attack for the skill. It'll be up for a while. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. And just like that, Buccaneer is finished. Definitely the most recorded clips I have of any job that I've showcased. Now, for the final class, I gotta showcase Cannon Shooter. So this is probably the longest list of first job skills I've ever seen. But starting off, we have Cannon Splasher. This is the mobbing skill. It deals 75% damage four times on six enemies. It just goes straight forward. It kind of feels really clunky though. There is a bit of a weird delay to it, which doesn't really feel right. And then we got Punchy Cannon, which is the 1v1 skill. Why we have a 1v1 skill at first job is completely beyond me. It also has that really weird feeling delay. Then we got Gigantic Backstep, which just your back shot. And uh, that's it. The backstop, the back shot was just moved all the way down to the first jump. Then we have cannon leap, which is the flash jump. And uh, yes, you can hotkey the flash jump. It's like with all the other pirates. And then we got cannon jump, which is the up jump that was moved from third jump. The biggest issue with the up jump is that they increase the delay on it. It's like 25% more delay compared to before unfortunately, so it also feels a little off. 
And then we got our usual passive build up cannon, 20 attack, 250 defense. And then we got together with monkey. You can toggle the monkey off, or you can toggle the monkey on. That's it. So for second job, we've got Slugshot. The skill deals 185% damage four times on uh, up to four enemies. Next up, we have the Monkey Rush Bomb, which you press it, you roll a bomb, and once the bomb explodes, it deals damage. So the rolling does 70% damage for three lines, and it will knock back enemies at a 100% rate, but the explosion does 370% damage. And then we got Monkey Magic, which is the same as before, just with a different skill animation. And then we got our passives that are all the same, and then Booster, which is now a passive, but now also gives 20 strength passively. That is it for second job. Moving on to third job, the first skill I have to show is Cannon Spike. 240% damage four times on six enemies, and it actually looks pretty cool. Then we got a new mobbing skill, Mini Cannonball. You throw a cannonball upwards, and it explodes. Kind of looks like it's service sided a little bit, just because you, you throw it up, and then it disappears, and then it blows up. So it might be ping reliant, but we'll have to wait and see. At third job, you can only use it when you're not attacking because there is a cast action to it. But there is no cast action when using the skill with Cannon Bazooka at fourth job. If you want to boss with it, you can set it to auto. And when you set it to auto, the skill will just attack on its own. Auto mode is based off of fourth job skills only, unfortunately and the skill will cast in place of where your cannon shooter is. It will not shoot up in the air. Next up, we've got Monkey Furious, which is a debuff, which I will show at Balrog. And um, the skill pretty much does the same as before. It has a 10 second cooldown on it. The worst part about it is that it's still server sided. So I gotta be as far as I possibly can to make sure this skill works. There we go. There's the debuff and the debuff will Increase your damage by 40% whenever you attack it. Next up, you got Oak Bell Roulette. I don't know why this skill is still in the game, but it pretty much does the exact same thing. It's just whenever you use it, your critical damage is increased by 5% and applies a random buff. So you still have to use it mainly because of the critical damage increase. I'm looking really hard at this skill. And it mentions nothing about a cooldown from what I see, I think. But it, it appears that the skill has a 3 minute cooldown. So we'll just go off with that. You got Lucky Dice, a 3 minute buff to roll whichever dice you want to get, or not want to get, it's random. But it has a 1 minute cooldown. I don't know why Buccaneer is the only pirate class with a 3 minute cooldown Lucky Dice, when Corsair and Cannon Shooter have a 1 minute cooldown. Then we just have the passes left, which are the same as before, so that's it for third job. Alright, fourth job. First skill, we got Cannon Bazooka. Now with Cannon Bazooka, I think the vertical range slightly increased a little bit. But overall, it's still not that great, but it still has that really broken horizontal range that it always did. And also, here's a demonstration of using Mini Cannonball with Cannon Bazooka. Again, only for Cannon Bazooka, there is no cast delay when you use the skill. Next up, we got Cannon Buster. It just looks a lot heavier. And uh, the shots look okay. I kind of wish you could see more of the projectile, though, instead of the uh, all the red around it. Next skill is Magnetic Anchor. It does the exact same thing, but holy shit, look at what it looks like. It looks a lot better. It looks like it's a lot stronger, but the fact that it is literally the exact same thing is kind of lame. Or the fact that it just still does the same damage. So we got Support Monkey Twins. It lasts for one minute. They have a 10 second cooldown. I have three up because I have the hyper skill for it on. But the cannon has completely changed for them. 
I don't know if the monkeys are the same or not, but I believe they are the same. And then we got Knowledge Strike, which I think is not very good on Cannon Shooter. Why? Because this class has no final attack. At least, that I know of. And then all the other skills are the same. Like, Maple Warrior, Girl's Will, and then all the other same passives. Uh, oh, this uh, stance skill. This skill became a passive. Pirate Spirit. You no longer have to buff it up with it anymore, which is actually really good. 80% stance, 15% chance to counterattack, and 40% damage to bosses. And then, of course, we got Double Lucky Dice, which, you know, chance to roll two dices. Hyper Passives are the same. We got the Support Monkey Twins, we got Cannon Bazooka, and we got Cannon Buster. For the active skills, Buckshot is now a toggle, and its animation has changed quite a bit. And then we also have Rolling Rainbow with a new animation. Again, it's like one of those skills that looks like it hits a lot harder, but it still just does the same damage. And then the Pirate Epic Adventure, it's pink, does the same thing as every everybody else's Epic Adventure. Fifth job skill changes. So, out of Candid Shooter's four fifth job skills, only one of them received changes. That is the big, huge, gigantic cannonball. So how this skill works now, two things. Uh, they enable the slow mode. You can activate the slow mode, which is good for bosses, by pressing the right arrow key, not right arrow key, but the, clicking the right button on your mouse, and you will activate slow mode. And also, if you hold the down arrow key and press the skill, you will fire all of the cannonballs that you have prepared. Slow mode is only applied whenever it hits a boss monster. So here's what the regular speed looks like. And then they're slow. So toggling it on and off also does apply for the existing cannonballs. When it is in slow mode, the speed for the skill is cut in half when it collides with enemies. And now for the demonstration of firing all three cannonballs at once. You hold the down arrow key, and you press the skill. That did a total of 1,440 lines. And that is all there is for the Cannon Shooter Showcase. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, even if you only just watched the class portion that you wanted to see. I really do appreciate it. There probably might have been a few things here and there that I missed. If I did miss anything, let me know so I can at the very least update my description with it. I do want to thank Max though a lot, aka Orange Mushroom, his blog post will be down below. It was extremely helpful for helping me understand some of the classes that I need a little bit more help to understand with. And also in some of the sections I only talked about boost nodes for certain skills, but in Max's blog you'll be able to view the boost nodes and what has changed for every single existing skill. So this right now is more so the alpha version of this remaster. The quote unquote beta version will be out on January 18th, hopefully with some big skill changes as well as the all jobs balance. That is going to be a big update for the test server and hopefully the new events for part two of Destiny will come in as well. And all of these skills, these changes will be officially released on the 27th. Right now, as they are in the test server, I think a lot of them do need to change. I genuinely believe that this is far from perfect, but again, they changed up 14 different classes, so it obviously isn't going to be perfect. I just hope everything will be polished and perfect in time for full release on the 27th. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next video.